All right, we are at our second or third pattern coffee today, where we discuss pattern or other interesting things in a developer's work. And today uh, we're talking about, let me add the text here, text. We're talking about the page object. A page object pattern. So, what is the page object pattern? Where is it used? And other interesting stuff. This is the rubber eight. So, not, it's not. Mm -hmm. Here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the page object pattern is um, a, an architecture that is used uh, mainly in UI testing. Um, usually, when you're when you're testing, you have something like a like a spec file, um, and it is spec like specification, and that you define your test where you say prepare. And usually, this the tests as in unit tests and other tests is often um, arranged in three steps, and that is arrange, act, and assert. So first you want to arrange and want to set the, the, the criteria for what you want to test. Then you actually make the step of the action you want to test. And then in the assert, in the third step, you check what has actually has happened. And when you make such a step spec file, in the best case, you don't want to have this very messy. You want, if such a test fails, you want it to be as easily, as easy possible to read as possible. So you can see ah where exactly did it go wrong and not debug into the into the test. You want an easy to read test. And that is why we need to try to have our spec file clean and easy. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So um, in order to do that, it's actually a little bit complicated. Maybe in a unit test sometimes this is easy when it's just about loading an object and applying our test methods on it, but um, in Why, the... What, what makes it so complicated? Um, complicated, for example, makes it that, um, depending on the UI, it is actually, for a machine, not so easy to click a button or enter a text field. Independently if this is HTML or like a Java frontend, a machine does not immediately know which button to click or how to click, but for this, we have some frameworks. For example, in the web front end, we have the, we have the web driver. And the web driver is a, a library that helps us to connect um, our programs with the browser, for example, Chrome or Firefox. And this web driver exposes us other functions, such as um, select an element in the DOM or yeah, select an element or input data into a text field. But in order to, um, to have this nice and clean, and the web driver exposes it very technical, and we want to have it clean, we need some sort of other abstraction in between. We need some sort of translation that exposes as easy functions, while itself it, it, uh, it does the work for us. And for this, we add another um, we add another um, layer or structure to our spec and that is called the page object. So, and we let this page object do all the nasty work for us and expose only interesting and easy to understand functions for it. So what does it mean, a page object? Um, I will show and you guys Mm -hmm. Jump in at anything. Let's say we have a login page. It looks somewhat like this. We know to use different colors. Yeah. So this is our nice header where our brand logo is. We have a username for our login and a password field, and both are text fields. Text and text. And also we have a nice button that says, log me in. 
So now in order to, um, to actually tell our spec file to access this, we need to make some nasty calls and that are called, um, and this is mainly happening in the domain of Selenium tests, if you heard about that, it's a testing framework for the web front end, but it can be used also, in the, the pattern can also be used for, let's say, Java, Java AWT. Um, now what we need to do in order to make that, that input, we need to go to our browser, we need to find the element in the DOM, which can be more or less complicated depending on what it is, if we um, added an ID or not. We need to input whatever complicated ID we have there, and then we need to give it a command, like click it. And if we have many of these things, and the longer it is, and the longer it's down in the DOM, the more complicated and un, um, yeah, unclean it gets. So what we do, as said before, we um, this is the, the rubber. Yeah, we make something for us that does this easier, and that we call the page object. And this page object, basically, for us, is a program representation of the page. If we look in our object-oriented uh, patterns as we usually do it, we try to abstract the reality into an object. And this is the way the same for this page. This page is an object and this page has different attributes. It holds this nice header, it holds this text field and this text field, and it holds a button. So what we do is we expose these four things for an, uh, for our, from our page object and we say uh, header, that is the stuff we defined before, complex long stuff, and we say text one, that's the how to get there in the long stuff, text two, and button. Now all the dirty stuff is in here, and that is actually quite okay because it is still dirty, but it's only five of them, so it doesn't, it doesn't get much more messy than that. Additionally, we can use inheritance, let's say if we have different logins or, many, or sites that share the same thing, let's say like this header, is, this header is shared, we can make it an object and tell it to inherit from it. So yeah, to have this header attribute through our whole object hierarchy. But the good thing about this now is in our, and let's go backward to this, in our spec, compared to our page object, here now we have the header, and we can simply, um, and the button here, and we can simply give it the click call, which we pre previously defined in our, uh, in, our specific, in our page object, and we can tell our spec to just call button click whenever we want to do that. If we, yeah. Mm. So the page object is, um, if you think back about um, MVC and stuff, then mm -hmm. the page object is the view, right? We define um, the view, uh, the page object as the view. We set a certain getter and setter. And it's it's with certain getters and setters. It's not necessarily a few, but if you if you look from the specification, the specification could look at it like a few. Mm -hmm. It's like its outer world, out, its interaction. And there's actually a metaphor for it that says the page object should enable the machine to act like a human. So give it all the, the necessary um, methods to act on the page like a human would do. And that does not even not, not only include button click, that could also include text one. Hey, text one, um, input text, or just input. And this can be then given a variable to, um, to fill the text field. So what you will see is, once you use the text one input and give it a string, this is what will, the, by the web driver then, somewhere, somewhere further abstracted on the, on the site, will be then filled in the browser. While our specification here does not need to care about that, our specification will be clean and just calling text one input um, password one, two, three, four. And 
the page object is going to take care of it, of the rest together with that. And afterwards, you might want to do a click, which is also exposed very, very clean to the to this to the specification. And that's when your action is done, actually already. Then, um, yeah. Sorry, I have a question though. This pattern is only done when, based on UI testing. So whenever I want to uh, architecture my project mm -hmm. to handle UI testing, that's mm -hmm. a very good pattern. To yes. Try, so. Mm -hmm. so then you clicked on button click, and next thing is you are on a new page now, and well, you just uh, what happens is you have in your spec file basically let's add another page that doesn't work we have to clean it or here we go to the next page and delete that maybe that's kind mm -hmm. of important. let me do that well that's also nice and neat i like that one even though it's ugly but this one is this one can be deleted um so now i was at page one at the first page and this one exposes me button and text one. And with the click on this button, I actually, in the website, I move to a new page because now I'm logged in. Um, how is this handled? Well, your spec file can be very, very loosely about that. WebDriver does that, does that all for you. Um, you basically just tell your spec file, give me an instance of page one and give me an instance of page two. And page two maybe has a button log out and another text field three, which can the same be used for inputting um, some other stuff. And in your spec file, you can just concatenate them one by the other. After you press page one dot button, and you continue, so you're now logged in. The next thing you can just as well, page two dot button logout, and you don't need to sweat anything about it. It's just that way, it's just that easy. You just concluded one after another. And now it's, it's continuing like this forever. You can make your way through the application and therefore go by uh, some sort of journey through your application. Until that point, when you come back to, um, to your original spec goal, and that is following a range, act and assert. So let's say, in order to test our application in a certain part, of course, we need to first log in, because we don't want to test login now, but anyway, nothing really works without a login. So you first do the three steps that are required to log in. Then you do two more steps required to get wherever you want to test your UI. And then you're actually going to the page where you want to see if what you want to happen, that it really happens. And then what you do there is you, may, let's say, click a button or yeah, enter a text field, click a button. So now maybe a new customer is created with the input data you, you gave to that text field. And once this has happened, you're going to the assert part, where now you use the page object to, to look what is maybe in the diff called um, first name. And if you check now, diff first name is exposed the same way, it's, it's a variable where you can get by get the first name, gives you the input of the ID first name, the text, and you can assert it if first name equals to Michael. And this is then how your actual assert is happening. That would be an easy case for, for the beginning where you go once through an arrange, then act, and then in the final step assert. But especially in UI testing, as it is very um, cumbersome, it's, um, it's taking a long time to do all of those range steps in the beginning. Even though it's done by a machine, still the browser needs to render every step. It's actually taking a lot of time. Um, you, want, you might want to concatenate it together 
So you say, okay, I'm not just acting and asserting once, actually maybe I want to act and assert five things um, to save time. And then of course this, this part could be repeated and happen again and again on another page. So you click, go to another page and do another act and assert. But um, it will be all easier and all more visible and easier to understand due to the use of the page object um, pattern which will allow you to not care in your test about the detailed stuff but about the things you want to test and not about the program stuff. That's it so far from my side. Do you have any questions on it? It's been a pretty much of a mono talk here and <laughs> not of a not a big, a big discussion. Yeah, I, I can I can know like I can understand why this is done, and this is one of the patterns that I really see. Mm -hmm. Why is it is it done this way? That the logic behind it. Once you try to use Selenium, for example, like for for UI testing, it kind of clusters with like in a nice way how the whole process is happening. So, um, for example, like this this um, page object, well, it, it kind of um, for future uses, even afterwards, for even to add more tests or. Ever, it, it kind of um, encloses the page, um, the whole, as you said, the whole dirty uh, targeting each text field, each button, everything, and make it an abstract so that at the end of the day you can use this, this page and just tell it, yeah, you need just to click this or you need to go there. And this works very well, at least with the assertion mm -hmm. phase, so I wouldn't say just this, so this works very well. Even with the range, I would say, um, even with the range and the assert, they were they made it nicer, so it's 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 tidy, I would say. Mm -hmm. But I don't have much questions because <laughs> I'm convinced of what I was said. Yeah. So um, are there any drawbacks? Uh, or let's say, are there any um, other patterns for um, for UI tests and um, uh, for with the page object? Are there any drawbacks? I didn't look so much in uh, in. in I, um, in other patterns that I used, I found this already very um, helpful. There's, a, there's, however, a discussion ongoing on if or if not a page object should provide you with assertions. Um, and there's a big forward backward for that if this page object should provide you like a you assert method or um, also, yeah, the question also as it is in general with such a longer range should you put assertions in your range in order to get proper feedback. Um, let's say you make a login and it fails, you never really make an assert for it if it fails not because you're not even interested in it. You want to go just away from that login to make your actual test. But um, if the test fails there in some early step, there's no good output in your console where it actually failed. And you need to go deep into it, into it and debug it. You could, of course, insert already early asserts to get a feedback about that in the console, but um, then it comes at a price of messing up the cleanliness of the, of the test initially, and, yeah, and so forth. Yeah. Mm, any other drawbacks? Do you know some? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Well, the, the another, one obvious drawback is that um, it's, and that's, that's, a, that's a positive thing, but also a negative thing is it provides abstraction. And while abstraction always helps to understand things easier, it usually is also more work. At least in the short run. So, you need to keep up and maintain not only your test, the test yourself, but also the hierarchy of your page objects. And basically, for every real page you have there that you want to test or at least include as a middle step because maybe you don't want to test your login but you need to have a page object for your login so you can't click a button you also need to maintain that. This of course begs the question how much do you really want to test and is more test better? Always? Yeah, I guess this is, this is a question of how you want to implement this actual pattern. So. Yeah. This, uh, this, um... I think here, here comes in the questions or answers regarding um, the team's decision, yeah. how much do you want to test, uh, coding guidelines, 
and um, yeah, very individual decisions on, of a team of saying how much percentage do we want to test. Um, yeah. um, maybe another thing worth mentioning is uh, you also have to um, edit the uh, actual page, right? We have mm -hmm. to implement this, but mm -hmm. uh, in you, for example, you've got to know mm -hmm. the ID, so certain IDs have to be um, defined in the um, actual uh, yeah. uh, production uh, site, right? That, that is just ID. I think it works also with CSS targeting. It is that it, it, nicer, it works course, with yeah. classes, it works, and that's a bit of a specification of the web driver that, that is usually used uh, here, that it works with classes, it works with IDs, um, it, it's even working with the XPath, so with the specific, um, selecting specific elements in the DOM and going down that path in the tree. Um, yeah, maybe you can, you can explain what's the difference between the XPath and, for example, CSS uh, uh, queries. Okay, let's continue this until 25 minutes and let's do it like this. So, for example, no, oh, cancel clean. So, usually with CSS, we know how we can address um, how we can address DOM elements. Is usually, for example, with the ID. So, this is this is an identifier that that is uniquely to any element in the DOM, or with classes. that can be um, not unique. So for example, class, class, blue, not sure if that's a good name. <laughs> but um, so an element like a button or a, or, a, or a field that has an ID should never be reused another, so this name for the ID should never be reused for another element while a class can be uh, reused. And you can then select by this ID or by this class. However, if you have multiple classes of blue in your in your DOM and you query for it, you get multiple of it back. And then the question is, which one do you use? That might be sometimes wanted, but in the in the perspective of UI test, um, you probably want it a little bit more defined. This is why IDs are usually a bit. Um, I, I would usually prefer IDs. For a selection. So in general case, um, IDs are used? I, I would say so, yeah. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you don't have the, the knowledge of an ID. You need to tell the, the machine how to do it and it doesn't have the same intelligence as you to just select the first element and if you don't happen to know the first element's ID, that can be cumbersome. So another possibility to do this is to go by XPath and XPath uh, is the following way that Every element in the DOM can be addressed via its unique path to uh, to it by its parent elements, and you can think a little bit of it as like on a route des route description on a street. You go left here, you go right there, and you go left again, and then you're there. So in an HTML path, such a X path could always look uh, in an absolute uh, path always look like you start with an HTML, you go down the body, you go down the, the fifth diff followed by the third diff and then maybe in the span inside the second um, inside the second table so this expression explains you very accurately where you are in the DOM and why this is not what I wrote here is not a specific uh, exact syntax of uh, XPath, I think it demonstrates um, what is meant. And so you also have these three possibilities to address elements in, in for example, technology used web driver. Yeah. And um, that's, that's it. I don't know, what was, what was the question about? Is that, does it answer your question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, we probably have to try it in ourselves. But um, I think I, I, I got the gist. All right, then I think we're slightly overdue our time. Actually, we're planning on fifty minutes usually, and now we're at twenty-five. So thank you for everybody. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I think that's a good point. Uh, it's a good uh, thing that uh, it takes longer than usual. <laughs> All right. Any yeah, more I, questions? No, I'm from my okay. side. I have nothing. Okay. Cool. Cool.